the vitamin shop was just sold again. Well, sort of, technically. Just stick around and I'll explain everything. I'll share my thoughts around that introductory statement a bit later in this content, but I did want to run through some of the basic financial information that was just reported in the quarterly earnings report and associated conference call for the period ending April 1st of 2023. I'll also grab any like publicly disclosed relevant information on the vitamin shop so I can better kind of glue all of these like supplement market insights together. But for those that are unaware, the Vitamin Shop is no longer a standalone public company, so if you were kind of looking for the stock ticker and it's not pulling up, I think it used to be uh, VSI, it's because the retailer was acquired in late 2019 by a publicly traded holding company named Franchise Group, which does have the stock ticker FRG. Franchise Group owns an assortment of retail assets that obviously includes the Vitamin Shop, but also Pet Supplies Plus, American Freight, Buddy's Home Furnishing, Badcock Furniture, and then Sylvan Learning. Being that the CFO of the franchise group doesn't like to break out a lot of segment-level financial details, as always, this content will be softer on the financial numbers, but more focused on actionable strategic information about the vitamin shop, which in the end is probably more valuable to my community anyways, right? So, Let's start at that segment level financial data to give you a basis of information on how the specialty supplement retailer has performed in this latest quarter. The Vitamin Shop reported 2023 quarter one total revenues of $321.7 million. That was up 3.5% year over year and up just under 10% on a quarter over quarter sequential basis. Now, don't get too hyped on that quarter over quarter number, though, as it's important to remember that the Q1 is like the Super Bowl in the specialty supplement retailer world, and you expect a jump in revenue because of these like New Year's resolutionists and then also consumers getting ready for spring break events. But while we can't predict what could happen the rest of the year, that Q1 revenue number for the vitamin shop puts them on pace for the top performance in company history, at least revenue wise. And this is all with 20% less stores than they had about seven years ago when they reached that number. I mention that because I think sometimes we need some historical perspective to understand current performance. As for same store comps numbers in the quarter, the vitamin shop had a positive 3.4%. And then leadership on that conference call also noted that Q2 was starting off strong with April showing a positive 1.9% same store comps number. Digital sales accounted for 25.7% of total revenue in the first quarter of 2023. That number is up from 25.1% in the prior year's first quarter. And then on a numerical like dollar value, that means that the vitamin shop sold about $4.6 million more online year over year. Operating profit in the quarter was $27.2 million, which was down year over year on a percentage basis. This was the result of having a higher proportion of sales coming from the sports nutrition side, that typically has a higher cost of goods and overall lower merchandise margins than the general like vitamins, mineral supplements. In fact, sports nutrition now accounts for approximately 55.8% of the overall sales, and that is compared to 48.9% in the first quarter of 2022. The vitamin shop ended the quarter at 699 stores overall in their system, which was down five from the previous quarter, All but three of those store locations in the fleet are corporate owned, but the Vitamin Shop franchising continues to build momentum with the total franchise location backlog up to 59 stores. Now I want to kind of shift into a quick merchandising update. If you haven't consumed my previous content on the Vitamin Shop, just to kind of get you caught up, this has become the section where I basically highlight notable new brands and or product additions and share any patterns that could signal future opportunities for supplement brand owners. Overall, this was like a slow period, likely because it's in between like the reset periods. You saw a collection of new flavors and maybe new product variants from existing vitamin shop vendors, but not a lot of like that new new. The 
only two that caught my eye was Bum Energy, which is the new energy drink from Chris Bumstead that's in a traditional 12 ounce soda can, has lower caffeine levels and contains Cognizant. And on the more like general wellness side, you had a new vegan brand called Future Kind that focuses on sustainability and is a certified B corporation. Another addition to kind of take note of was the Vitamin Shop's private label brand Body Tech. This one was important to mention because up until this license collab with Peeps for Easter, the Vitamin Shop had only done entertainment IP licensing. As I mentioned previously, the Vitamin Shop is focusing more heavily on its private label brand basket with expectations of it being about 30% of the total revenue in 2023. The final merchandising note is an update to these comments that I made a year ago. The Vitamin Shop also announced a partnership with Logic Broker, a cloud-based digital commerce platform for marketplace and dropship connectivity. The partnership will expand the nutritional supplement retailers, digital merchandising capabilities, and provide expanded product assortments to its online customers. According to CEO Sharon Lighty, the Vitamin Shop being a premier destination for health and wellness solutions that support millions of people on their journeys of lifelong wellness, their goal is to continually provide new products and services that meet those customer needs. So kind of here's my hot take on this extended merchandising strategy. I'd be more interested in the vitamin shop adding more services or more strategic partnerships compared to more products when thinking about how they can support customers throughout the entire wellness spectrum. Adding new categories of merchandising such as fitness accessories or sports equipment or light equipment like yoga mats or exercise bands really reminds me of something that bodybuilding.com did a year or so ago and to my understanding it's not going all that well. In my opinion, those items are easily found on a number of websites, retailers, and marketplaces very easily. Maybe something more is within the strategic map that maybe I'm not privy to in terms of the information, but this doesn't feel special to me as a standalone strategy. Well, a lot more merchandising was recently added from this partnership, and I'm going to be terse here and just kind of say I still don't get it at all. There are more impactful, differentiated ways to achieve being a premier destination for health and wellness solutions that support millions of people on their journeys of lifelong wellness. This just looks like a junky assortment of accessories that can be sourced from China for pennies on the dollar. And then finally, let's talk about that introduction. If you did watch the last quarterly content about the vitamin shop, you would have heard this at the very end. Wall Street Journal reported that the franchise group could be looking at a management buyout. If you're not familiar with that term, it's just what it sounds like. It's when a company's existing leadership team works together to purchase either a total or a majority stake of a business. What started as highly probable rumors became reality. In a deal that's expected to close in the second half of 2023, the Vitamin Shop's owner, franchise group, would be taken private through a $2.6 billion management buyout. The group buying the portfolio is led by current franchise group CEO, Brian Kahn, but includes a consortium of other investment banks and private equity firms. After the transaction is complete, the current franchise group management team, including the CEO, will continue to lead the company and run its current portfolio of retail brands. What does this all mean for the vitamin shop overall? With an expected debt levered balance sheet after the management buyout and the vitamin shop currently being the profit generating segment in the business, probably a quicker franchising and refranchising transition, and maybe a little tightening of the belt and pressure put on vendors. That's along with more focus being put on private label sales to increase profitability. So current vendors at the vitamin shop should at least be cautious of that prediction and expect some annoying kind of administrative hiccups and slight inefficiencies from the ownership swap. What does this all mean for the vitamin shop's employees? It probably shouldn't concern any corporate or store level employees because I don't really see any store optimization plans or like massive cost cutting programs in the short term future. I also don't see any major operational changes 
to the long-term strategy. Now, finally, what does this mean to little old me? Well, next quarter will likely mark the last and final part of this content series that has spanned like almost five years. If you guys have any ideas on how I should bid farewell to this content series ending, let me know in the comments below. But I hope you enjoyed this YouTube video. If you did, consider hitting the like button to support me. Also, help me get to my new short-term goal of 3,000 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button. I'd love to see you join me on this journey, but we need to fix the fact that basically 80% of you that are watching this YouTube video right now are not subscribed to my channel, and that makes me extremely sad. But I do want to thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one.